All right, so for this problem, uh, what we have to do is it wants us to graph the lovely function here. Uh, I'm just going to graph 1 plus cosine of x. And we're going to kind of see what that transformation is going to do to our problem and see what effect it will have. So we have y equals 1 plus cosine of x. So the main important thing, ladies and gentlemen, when we're graphing is we're going to go through a set of set of kind of skills to be able to find important information of our graph. And it's going to be the same vocabulary that we've talked about for on and on and how to find. The first thing I think the easiest one to find is always our amplitude. So remember, amplitude is going to represent the absolute value of A. Well, remember, A is going to be your value that's being multiplied by your cosine of a. If you guys remember the parent function of our graph, which was d plus a times cosine of bx minus c. So a is going to be the value that's being multiplied by our cosine. Well, in this function, our a is going to be what? 1, right? So we have absolute value of 1, which equals 1. Then we're going to take a look at the period. And remember, period is going to be 2 pi divided by b. So you go ahead and take a look at this, and you, can, and you can see b is going to be your coefficient of x. So I look inside my function, I see the coefficient of x is again is 1. So that's going to be giving me 2 pi. Now, if you guys remember, when we were graphing, when I kind of showed you the graphs of cosine of x and sine of x, there was four critical points that we talked about when we looked at one period. We had a minimum, maximum, and we had x, and we had x-intercepts. And remember, between each critical point was an even distance amongst each other. So what I want to do is, between my four critical points, I want to be able to find the distance between each critical point. So what I'm just going to write in, so I'm just going to say that the distance between the critical points, all you do is take your period and divide it by 4. Pi half. So what that's going to do is that's going to kind of tell me the scale that I'm going to have. A lot of time we call this the x scale. So we're gonna, that's going to kind of tell us the, diff, um, the separation between our, on our x scale. Then also, when graphing, we're, we're going to start by graphing one period. Even though the sine and cosine functions continue on forever, we're going to look at just one period. And if you remember the parent graph, the parent graph of cosine started at 0 when x equals 0 and ended when x equals 2 pi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that exact, I'm going to have my equation start with that exact same equation, but I want to see if there's going to be any transformations. So what you do is you take what's inside of your function, which in this case is just x, and set it equal to 0, and then set it equal to 2 pi. Now, since I have no transformations inside my function, my start and my end of my graph are also going to be 0 and 2 pi. So let's go ahead. Oh, last thing, let's just go and talk about. If you notice, we have 1 as d. That means a positive d. By looking at our transformations, d is going to tell us to shift vertically. Since this is a positive 1, we are going to now shift up. So you can say shift um, up one unit. All right, so let's go ahead and get this graph going. So I'm going to have a graph. I'll create the y-axis right here. So the first thing that we want to do is remember that the cosine graph always started at 1, 0, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of graph this first without the vertical translation, and then I'll graph the vertical translation first. So remember, there's four critical points. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. The distance between the critical points is pi halves. That means this distance is pi halves. This distance is pi halves. This distance is pi halves. Each distance between each x, x mark is pi halves. So therefore, that means the first one is pi halves. Pi halves plus pi halves is pi. Pi halves plus pi is going to be 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. Does everybody see what I did, how I scaled that? 
And we could also do this in the negative direction. Okay, so now let's go and graph with the cosine. Let's graph the parent graph with the cosine. Yes. Okay, well, I'm going to go through this. Um, I'll get to that right now. So remember, the amplitude tells you the half distance between your max and your minimum point of your graph, right? And if you remember, the parent graph of cosine started at 0, 1. So that's 1, that's 2. So remember, the parent graph started at 0, 1 went down to its next critical point, which is an x-intercept. The next critical point was the minimum value. Next critical point was the intercept. And then it went back up to the maximum. So that's what we call the parent graph of the cosine function. right? However, this 1 is now going to tell us to shift this graph up one unit. All right? So that means every point now is going to be shifted up a unit. Okay, So really, my graph's going to look something like this. And then I can just kind of continue that. No, what did I do wrong? This to this, third on in, okay, to here, to there. So there you go. Here's going to be your graph, 1 plus cosine of x, right there. As remember, it's going to continue going in the positive and in the negative direction. Make sense? Okay.